Wednesday night is the best night of the week because it's the good night of the Daily Prince of Right, April? Yes. I'm going to get our feature performer started. Everybody, he is only the second comedian we've ever had as feature performer. He's going to be doing 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, Gene Morgan, he was the first comedian ever to perform at this mic before we had any lights, before we had any real sound, before we had any other people. Uh, <laughs> I think he might have been the first performer, like besides me and, and Emily. What up? Uh, everybody, he's our good friend and a great comedian, and I can't forget, he's from Iowa. Yeah, that's great. Give it up for Gene Morgan, everybody. Give it up. Thank you. Oh, that was a really lovely intro, guys. Give it up for Andy Rose for putting this whole thing on. Everyone is doing a great job of it. Uh, thank you. This is thank you all for coming out here and not staying at home and watching Tall Girl Netflix new show. Like that, that really makes me happy. <laughs> it's a good show. You should check it out. Uh, so Andy, what he was talking about being the first comedian here—that's true. I was the first comic here. In fact, I was the first comic here for a year and a half. <laughs> like, not no joke. Like. And that was great, because it was just audience members and musicians and poets, and this was my secret spot. Like, I wouldn't, I didn't tell a single comedian about this place, because it was awesome. I didn't want them to ruin it, you know? Yeah, it's true. And uh, then every comic found out about it, and now I got to battle every time I come here to be the funniest guy on stage. Like, it's the worst. But now that comics have all just, like, flooded this open mic, I kind of get gentrification now. Like, I get it. I understand it. It's a problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been practicing really hard for this set, by the way, if you don't know. Like, I've been going to open mics. And that's all you got to do, really. Like, <laughs> for you. But I have been practicing. To loosen up, I went to my first New York City strip club. I went to work. Yeah. yeah. Lipsticks up in the Bronx, as for Chelsea. Okay, and <laughs> I learned this about myself though from going to strip clubs. I learned this, which is that I prefer going to strip clubs in big cities like New York City as opposed to the small town strip clubs I'm used to going to in Iowa. Because I don't know what you guys know about small town strip clubs, but small town strip clubs are just dark and depressing. <laughs> Because everybody knows each other in a small town. There's no hiding it. Like the DJ will be like, come to the stage, folks, your next dancer. She's a checkout girl at the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> and she's also an active member of the PTA. Give it up for Stephanie Swanson's mom, everybody. Let her hear it. <laughs> she's my cherry pot. No. <laughs> I, I did live in Iowa for a long time, Council of Iowa. One thing I've realized is that I've met more people living in Brooklyn from Iowa than the entire time I lived in Iowa. <laughs> it's almost like everybody in the state of Iowa just went like, Iowa sucks, right? And we're all like, yeah, it does suck. Let's go make Brooklyn suck now too, come on. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> There was, uh, man, growing up in Iowa, man, like, it was, it was different, man. Like, there was a bumper sticker that just haunts me to this day. Like, I, I dreams about it. It was during, it was during uh, Iraq War, War on Terrorism, I can't whatever. And the bumper sticker read, nuke their ass and take their gas. <laughs> Honest to God, that's what the bumper sticker said. I still see it in my head clear as day. And that really hurts me because they used the wrong there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was just like, man, forget I'm racist. Like, at least be grammatically correct. Don't you guys just like hate those orphans? Yeah, man, they're everywhere. Like, it's all about them all the time. I'll never forget this one time we're playing the game Never Have I Ever. It was in high school. We're playing the game Never Have I Ever. Do you guys know that game, right? Never Have I Ever. It's a great drinking game, you get to know people, embarrassing stuff, stuff you don't know. And this kid, Nico, it was his, we didn't really know him, he was a new kid, and we invited him to the party. And it's his turn to give a never ever, and he goes, 
Never have I ever met my real parents. Kill the mood of the party, guys. The party was killed. And then it was my turn, and I went, never have I ever been adopted. And I saved the party. Like, I was the hero that party needed. I once told that joke at an open mic, and it got a pretty good laugh. And then afterwards, a woman rushed the stage, and she tackled me off the stage, and she went, that man is being offensive. I am an orphan, and how dare he joke about me? And I'm just like, fucking orphans, man. Like, it's always about them. It's never enough. Uh, it's okay if I drink some water? No. <laughs> no. No. No, I mean not drink some water. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, by the way. <laughs> that really sucked me, didn't it? I've done stand-up before. Believe it or not, I haven't always been this funny. Uh, I've done stand-up before where nobody laughed. And it was the first time, actually, stands out in my head. I did my high school talent show, and uh, I told my best friend, Zach Farrell, to heckle me. And I wanted him to heckle me. I wanted him to yell from the audience, you suck, and then I would hit him back with, not as much as your mom did to my dick last night. <laughs> because that's how comedy works, you know? Like, it's funny, right? <laughs> Thought it. <was. laughs> so I'm on stage, and I'm waiting, I'm doing my set, whatever, and I give my friend Zach, who's in the audience, I give him the code to heck him. By the way, not a subtle code, very much a <laughs> Zach sees the code and yells out, You suck! It's my time to shine, and I went, Not as much as my mom did to my dick last night. Wait, hold on. Not, no. not, hold on. I, did I suck a dick? No. I can't remember. There was dick sucking involved. Not as, wait, my mom didn't suck a dick. <laughs> Your mom sucked a dick. <laughs> So I get hauled off the stage, <laughs> obviously. You can only say dick sucking so many times in high school and expect it to go well. And I get hauled into the principal's office and the principal, Mr. Delgado, was like, you know, Gene, you can be a comic and you can be clean. You don't have to be raunchous or dirty. You know you should try to be like Bill Cosby. There is a comic that you should try to be like. Time machines, like just that. Like, I want to relive that. I relive that moment on a loop in my head. It's a great moment. But to be fair, that's not the most embarrassing moment I've had on stage. <laughs> it gets worse. Comedy is just a levels of worse. The worst moment I've had on stage was when I was going to college in Minnesota, and I went to this one open mic. And I was just, I thought I was funnier than, I don't know why, but like I just assumed that I was funnier than every Minnesotan. Like, <laughs> and I was just like, these Minnesotans don't know comedy, I know comedy. Yeah, I was wrong, those Minnesotans are funny. Like, they are really funny people. Are there any Minnesotans here? No, because they're, they're succeeding at comedy, that's what they're doing. <laughs> but no, they were so funny. And then it was my turn to go on stage, and I told my first joke, and it got like this huge laugh. And I was just like, man, it's not a comedy. Minnesotans are just really easy to make. They laugh at it, it's great. And then the laugh just kept going and going and going. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, that Anne Frank joke wasn't that funny. Uh, what's going on here? And then an audience member who was like sitting where you are, sir, he pointed at my pants. And unbeknownst to me, my pants had fallen down beneath my knees. And I didn't even know. <laughs> I swear to God, this is true. So I pulled up my pants and I just rushed off stage. And I just was like, my career's over, that's it. I'm gonna be a real estate agent, fuck this shit. And this other comic, he grabs me by the shoulder and he goes, hey, 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 kid, kid, kid. That pants fit you did, fucking hilarious. Like, you, you're gonna make it, man. Uh, so now I'm still in comedy. <laughs> More water, okay. You gotta stay hydrated. You gotta watch the commercial stay hydrated. Do you guys know what you would do if you randomly woke up in Matthew McConaughey's body? Anybody have any suggestions? No, none? Okay, I'll tell you what I would do. I would do everything that I already do, 
but as Matthew McConaughey. I'll give you some examples. I work at a Whole Foods. I would go to work at Whole Foods as Matthew McConaughey. I think that'd be pretty cool. I would do my errands around New York City. I would just run everywhere around New York City as Matthew McConaughey. Shirtless, I assume. I don't know. I think that'd be great. And I would do stand-up comedy as Matthew McConaughey. But I would use the, my own material. So that pants bit you just did, where it's like, yeah, man, my pants fell down. Like, I would do that as Matthew McConaughey. And then hopefully one of you fine audience members would be like, Matthew McConaughey is the biggest piece of shit in the world. He's stealing material from Gene Morgan. This has to end. <laughs> this can't be stopped. Uh, he is a good looking guy, though. I'm really jealous of him. Like, I think he's the best looking guy on the planet. I really do. Like I, like, I know who I look like celebrity-wise. I know I look like a balding Bob Ross. I get it, you know? I have a mirror, and I'm okay with that. Like, I wake up in the morning, and I'm fine with that, because I started out in high school as Screech from Saved by the Bell. Not a good high school, right? <laughs> so I started at Screech, right? Now I'm at balding Bob Ross. I'm really hoping within the next two to three years, Napoleon Dynamite. Like, I'm really, I think I can make it. <laughs> uh, check my notes. Don't have all this memorized. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. As I said, I work at a Whole Foods. Usually someone says woo. That's really weird. <laughs> We're in Brooklyn. Thank you. <laughs> this is Brooklyn, right? You guys like it there? <laughs> I've seen the lines. <laughs> the lines are out the door. But no, I work in uh, Whole Foods, and I have seen the actor John Voight in my Whole Foods 57 times. <laughs> he's in there all the goddamn time. <laughs> I imagine he's hoping somebody would ask him to do a movie or something. Like that's what a just day off or something. Fucking I don't know. But yeah, I work in customer service, and I'm ringing up. John Voight's order. And he's being really nice. He's being like super, like he's chatting with me. What are you doing, uh, young man? You know, we're having a good conversation. And then I rang up his kale. And then he saw the price of the kale and he went, whoa, that kale is way too expensive. I'd like to return that. And I was like, man, not even John Voight can afford these Whole Foods prices. <laughs> even he is just like, mm -mm, nah, man, I make John Voight money, okay? <laughs> not Whole Foods money. <laughs> Oh, man. Working at Whole Foods is a trip. Like, I had a customer just the other week, swear to God, ask me where we keep our grass-fed salmon. <laughs> Let that sink in for a moment. A customer asked me where we keep grass-fed salmon. I had to tell her, I was, I was polite, I was polite. I was like, miss, I'm sorry, uh, but that doesn't exist. <laughs> I said that to her, and she responded with, that is malarkey. <laughs> what kind of Whole Foods doesn't have grass-fed salmon? <laughs> so I had to check in the back for grass-fed salmon. <laughs> so I'm checking, I'm literally checking the back for grass-fed salmon. But like I'm wasting time just like on my phone or whatever. <laughs> Next to a guy trying to help a customer find tuna, free tuna or whatever the fuck he's like, I don't know. So like I go out and I find the lady and I'm like, uh, miss, I checked in the back. We're all out of grass fed salmon. <laughs> and she goes, oh no, that's okay, young man. Uh, I already found some. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing I didn't know about. When did salmon start eating grass? <laughs> if, they, if they are eating grass, we got a lot to worry about. <laughs> but like, I'm curious as a cat right now. <laughs> so I go to the seafood department. I'm like, hey guys, uh, when did we start serving grass-fed salmon? <laughs> and the seafood guy goes, oh no, we don't. But whenever a customer has a ridiculous request, I just give them a catfish instead. <laughs> we, have, we have protocol for this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's just great. What a great job. <laughs> great people, great jobs. Great atmosphere. <laughs> to be the slow for Whole Foods. Whole Foods will get you what you want, even if it doesn't exist. Like, 
She wasn't that bad though. The worst customers at Whole Foods by a mile are people who come in with emotional support dogs. And these people, I'm not a fan of them. <laughs> They're the worst. And I feel bad for the dogs more than the human. Like the dog, like think about what jobs dogs have. Like we have dogs that like help the blind and sniff out bombs and drugs. Like real, like the important jobs. And these dogs, every time I look at them, they have a look on their face that's like, oh, uh, my owner can't go into a Target without crying. Like, <laughs> that's my whole day. <laughs> have you guys ever tried to tell a customer that they can't bring in their emotional support dog? It's impossible. I've tried so many ways. Like, I'll be like, oh, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, your emotional support, you can't bring in your emotional support dog. It could peer poo in the grocery store. We have to clean it up. That wouldn't be uh, fair for our, our staff. I'm really sorry, you have to leave. And they'll go, sorry my parents got divorced. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> fuck it, bring in the dog. What are you, 67? Yeah, you should be over by now, but <laughs> that's cool. You, you do you. <laughs> I know I pick on Whole Foods a lot, but it's Whole Foods. <laughs> it's my job, it's what you do. And it's not the worst job I ever had. Uh, the worst job I ever had, I used to be a bellboy at a pretty fancy hotel in uh, San Diego, California. That was rough. Ooh, that's where I'm from. You're from? Really? Yeah. What part? If you don't mind me asking. Um, East County. Ew. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Accurate. Uh, yeah, right. I, I grew up in a script ranch, so kind of suburban. <laughs> yeah. That means I'm better than her. No, that doesn't mean anything. No, no. That's really sweet. Uh, we'll talk after the show. That's really cool. <laughs> um, but I was a bellboy at a hotel in San Diego, and, and I like nobody ever tipped me. Like nobody ever did. This was a really fancy hotel, and I remember I just had to lug these heavy bags to like people's rooms, and my back would be hurting all the time. And it was a really fancy hotel. And I remember I held this one lady to her room. She was from Northern California, and she goes, oh, "I'm sorry, young man. I don't have any money to tip you with, but." Uh, can I give you some marijuana instead? <laughs> I, I, I was taken aback. I was like, ma'am, I'm sorry. I cannot take any marijuana. I can only take cocaine, all right? Like that's, this is a fancy hotel, all right? Like what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't smoke weed at the time because uh, I watched a lot of drug PSAs and they did a number on me. I was a child of the 90s. Drug PSAs used to scare me. There was one drug PSA that still, I remember it to this day. It was a group of friends, and they're at a restaurant, and they're all just like chilling, you know, having a good time. And one of the friends goes, Hey, yo, Donnell! We about to go get high, man. Wanna come with? And then Darnell goes, Nah, man, I'm good. I'm a bug influence. <laughs> And then Darnell's friends go, whatever, man. And they leave the diner, leaving Dar Darnell there alone, above the influence. <laughs> but all that taught me was, is that if you do drugs, you don't have to pay for the restaurant tab. Like, it's pretty sweet. You can just leave the diner, guys. <laughs> leave poor fucking square Darnell there to pay for the bill, am I right? Weed's awesome. Oh, good times. So, how are you guys doing on your money? Everybody got money? You're here, you guys are doing pretty good, <laughs> I imagine. I, I had a bill I had to pay a couple months ago, and it was, I'll never forget, it was for $513.47. <laughs> and I paid the bill, and I went to sleep, and I woke up the next morning, it didn't go through. I was like, what the fuck? And I checked, it turns out I didn't click the right button or something, so I clicked the right button, went through, went about my day, checked my bank account, I had negative $513.47 in my bank account. Honest to God, it charged it twice. But, yeah, right? I did the mature thing. I did the mature thing. I texted my dad. I texted my father. <laughs> and let him know what I was going through. So if it's all right with you, I'm gonna share with you the text message that I sent to my dad at 4.28 in the morning. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Buckle up. Dad, major, 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 major problem in my life. I need your help desperately. I fucked up with my taxes. 
First, I can't call you because my cell phone isn't charging. It just isn't. <laughs> so today, I need your help. I paid my tax that you told me to, but it wasn't going through, so I paid it again. Long story short, they charged me twice, and now I have negative $513.47. I fucked up. I have no money, no money, none. Please, if you can, call this number, 518-457-5434. I'm going to save you a bit. I'm going to scroll down to the end, but it ends with me going, I'm so scared. <laughs> And then my dad texted back at 9.34 p.m. <laughs> everything okay? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, dad, everything's fine. <laughs> Just live in the broke dream. So if you guys want to give me some money or whatever, like... <laughs> no, nah, everything's good. I'm just fucking you. Uh, man, how great was it that we weren't on the Titanic? Like... <laughs> That thought crosses my mind way too often. Like, I love that I wasn't on the Titanic. Oof. Man, that would've been great, you know? And one thing I learned about Titanic that I thought was bullshit, but it turns out it was true, which was that uh, when the ship was going down, apparently, like in the movie, the, the ventrilo, or the, not the ventrilo, the, the violinist ventriloquist. <laughs> no, the violinist, they came out and they like comforted the passengers. To like, you know, be like, hey, we're about to die, but like, listen to some Mozart. You know, like, that's, that's what they did. There's something kind of nice about that that I like. And I'm really glad that whoever was in charge of booking the talent for the Titanic decided to go with the violinist and not the stand-up comedian cruise guy. <laughs> that would have been way worse. Could you imagine that? All right, folks, so the captain asked me to come out here and come for you guys, because apparently he had an iceberg. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of icebergs, my ex-wife. Let me tell you about that battle axe. Uh, or, no, excuse me. <laughs> Speaking of the Titanic, Donald Trump. Oh! oh. Nailed that transition. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Daily Press? I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm woke. Okay. <laughs> so the night after Donald Trump was elected president, I... To take that. <laughs> Is everybody's phone alerts about to go off right now? Yeah. Oh man. Amber alerts. Amber alerts, guys. Is it a red van? That was this morning. It's yes. a black Civic. Have they not caught this fucking van yet? <laughs> Tell whoever stole that van that they're interrupting my set, alright? It's all about Jean Morgan right now. <laughs> I hope yeah. that they find her, <laughs> bring her back in one piece. Let's, we'll edit that out. <laughs> We'll edit that part out. So, so, Donald Trump. So the night after Donald Trump was elected president, I went to an anti-Trump rally protest. Didn't do much. <laughs> but I went with the best of intentions. I went thinking, like, he's going to see the protest, and he's going to not want to be the president anymore. Like, I really had high hopes about this protest, to be honest with you. So I go to the protest. It's on 14th Street, Union Square, and there's like music just blasting, and they're hanging Trump and effigy in their signs. It's great. It's, it's a good time. It was. It was a great time. Like it was. We were all sad that Hillary Clinton lost, but like we were all comforted together by uh, we're, we're losers. Like, I don't know. Um, and then the leader of the protest comes out, and he goes, "All right, man, we're marching." to Trump Tower. Let's go! And we're on 14th Street. <laughs> I don't know if you know where Trump Tower is. It's all the way on fucking 59th Street. It's nowhere close. But I marched along. I marched along, and I gotta admit, I almost became a Trump supporter. Almost. Al al almost. Because there were so many hipsters blasting music the entire time, and there's only so much Mumford and Sons you can listen to. Like, I found the limits. <laughs> oh my god, you guys have been a great crowd. This has been fun. This has been really a lot of fun. Uh, tell my parents that I'm good at this, by the way. I don't think they believe me. <laughs> I try to do stand-up comedy whenever my parents Whenever I go visit my parents, wherever they come here, and I, my parents live in San Diego uh, now, and 
I went home last Christmas and I was like, I'm going to do stand up in front of my mom and dad. They're going to love me. It's going to be great. And I got on a show and don't mean to brag, but kind of killed it. Like, I'm a pretty funny motherfucker. Like, I did very well. So afterwards, my parents came up to me, my mom and dad. And my mom goes, Gene, I had no idea you were that funny. You really impressed me. I love you. I'm so proud of you. You were amazing. And she gives me like the biggest hug. It was great. And my dad goes, nice. <laughs> That's all. That's all he said. I swear to God. Just nice. Very nice. That crushed me. I'm not going to lie. Because I, I kind of do this for him. <laughs> I kind of, a little bit I do this for him. Yeah, I, I like making him laugh. He's a good guy. So I do this for him. And so, like, afterwards, we're eating at a Mexican restaurant, and we don't, like, express our emotions that much, because, you know, we're men, or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> you know, then, then we're, we're, we're getting better. But, like, that night, I had to say something. I was like, Dad, why couldn't you love me the same way that Mom loved me? She gave me, she loved me, she hugged me, she said she was impressed. Why couldn't you say the exact same thing? And my dad, I'll never forget the words that he said, they inspired me to this day. He said, I knew you were funny. Simple as that. I knew you were funny. I knew you were going to go up on stage. I knew you were going to kill it. What you did tonight, you didn't, you didn't impress me at all because I know how funny you are and I know you're going to make it. It's a really nice thing that my dad said. Yeah. Why does my mom believe in me? Like, why? What's up with that? Like, come on. My dad's like the one who believes in me. My mom was impressed. I had no idea. You're so amazing. Uh, how am I doing on time, by the way? I got uh, three minutes. Three minutes, okay. <laughs> got to end strong. I'll end it on this. My first day in New York City. Uh, I, I did an open mic at this place called the Grizzly Pear. You know it? Yeah. It's kind of a shithole. Uh, it's, it's not, you don't own it, do you? Yeah, good. <laughs> You're like, he's banned from the pear. <laughs> No, I did an open mic at the Grizzly Pair. And uh, the second I signed up and I put my name in that bucket, I started to cry. Oh. I was, because I was doing it. I was living my dream of being a stand-up comedian in New York City. So I ran to Washington Square Park and I sat on a bench and the tears were literally streaming down my face. I could not stop the crying. And in that moment, guys, I knew for a fact that I was in New York City because not one person came up to me and asked me if I was okay. <laughs> Literally, they all just walked right on by. Homeless guy saw I was crying and yelled out, Get it together, pal! <laughs> You're in the jungle now, baby. You're gonna die. <laughs> all right, guys, that was my time. My name is Gene Morgan. My name is Gene Morgan. Thank you so much. It's a lot of fun. Thank you for living. Everybody give it up for your future performer. Give it up.